the kind of impact you see on flows uh, if we do see uh, the yuan included in the SDR basket? Thanks very much for having me. I think, yes, it will have a massive influence on the international market and on the international basket of these currencies. But uh, the main event, uh, as your earlier guest was saying, it is all about the dollar, and then that is the focus for the week. And it, actually for the entire month, and that's going to set the tone how the yuan or the, any other currency is going to trade when it is included within that basket or whether it is not. But if anyone likes volatility, this is what we said to our investors this morning, if you like volatility, this is the time perhaps that you wanted to trade because the Federal Reserve Committee is set to increase the interest rates for the very first time in nearly 10 years. How does that then, if, if that's a call name in terms of the fact that we're probably likely to see the lift off this time around, how does that then play out for some of the emerging market currency? We've already seen the rupee probably uh, looking at the way the dollar index has been panning out already weakened substantially. I, is there a certain call, is there a certain trade that you're focusing on when we talk about the emerging market currencies? Yes, I think there are a number of trades that we wanted to look at. Number one, we have been consistently saying one element, that which is the strength of the dollar. And that has been a concern for the US and for the, for the S&P 500 uh, companies. But when we talk about the emerging markets, what we said was that, okay, that the Fed have left the increase in interest rates for a long time. Now, what that happened is an enormous amount of speculation has built into the market, and we do think that that was pretty much the strength that we have seen in the dollar. And then the oversell up that we have seen in the emerging market was because of that. But now, given that the Fed is ready to increase the interest rates, we do think that the emerging markets will start popping back up. Because less, uh, if, if you look on the entire picture, the Fed cannot be comfortable where the dollar is, and they can't let the dollar index carry on moving higher. They have to keep it at a level where their own export doesn't, matter, doesn't uh, get impacted that much. So, hence we do think that, okay, that the Fed would increase the interest rates, but how much are they going to increase the interest rate? How aggressive they are going to be with that one? That would be very much another question uh, going into December or after December. But again, back for the emerging markets, we do think that the India is still a very strong uh, economy and then it, that is a very good investment. But secondly, China, we do think that the GDP growth for us uh, the forecast that we are doing for 2016, we do think that the GDP growth within China would even slide further. But as for India, it is all about reforms, maintaining the political situation within that country, because that is the only way that the, uh, the wave of this upward trend can continue within India. Okay. Uh you know, name the, the other interesting bit, obviously, and, and staying with the whole dollar index theme or the currency movement is obviously its impact on the commodity space. You've seen a major slump taking place as far as commodities are concerned. Oil is something that you've been tracking closely as well. Well, what's your reading there? Yes, I think, I think this week is very important. You have the ECB meeting, you have the OPEC meeting, you have the U.S. non-farm payroll, and then you have the FOMC. Hence, the volatility is all over the place. But when it comes to OPEC, Let's look at the production. Well, how much they are producing? They are pro they're producing nearly 30 million barrels per day. But when you look at the production for the U.S. non-farm payroll, you have nearly 50 million barrels. So is Saudi Arabia cutting the production? Does that really going to matter? Well, that equation would be further anchored or whether that uh, situation would go further down. Not really. It's not going to make that much of a difference. Saudi Arabia... What we, our base case scenario is that the, the peg between the dollar and the Saudi Real, that could go away. And if that does take place, the, our oil will slide even further because then Saudi Arabia wouldn't have to fight a war when it comes to currency market. They can just continue and uh, focusing on the market share. I think coming in December and uh, on this Friday, what the OPEC, uh, we don't think there would be a cut because they are still very comfortable with the levels where they're sitting. Yes. They are, uh, their uh, foreign reserves are really bleeding. Uh, they nearly stand at 640 billion. And whether they can, but they can, if, if, you, if you look back, a uh, few decades back, Saudi Arabia 
has a history of running a massive budget deficit as well. So they can still afford to do that. And, and even uh, over the weekend, there were reports that they are looking at a massive reforms. They're looking at so many different ways where they're going to cut their expenses. So that particular element for me is just telling me that, okay, in this OPEC meeting, even though they are saying that they're going to make a cut, there will be no cut. And keep a close eye how the Chinese market would trade because these uh, bigger players, they're still cutting their prices when it comes to exporting or providing oil to the Chinese market. And then Saudi Arabia has once again gained a lead with 3.99 million tons of barrel providing oil to China. And they're still the leader. Now, Russia, with the, the recent events with Turkey, the, the country is going to feel even more pain. With more sanctions on Russia are already there. With the recent situation with Turkey, they will have to even produce more oil. That's the main revenue for the country. So I think, okay, if Saudi Arabia does cut uh, their uh, production, how that would impact Russia? Is, is Russia is going to back to, also going to say, okay, are we going to cut the prices? We don't think so. We think that the price of oil is going to be staying within the level and it's going to consolidate between 35 to $50.